Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris, and my colleagues in he are here today to share with you some important information about your CalSTRS and CalPERS pension, and to ask you the question, are you saving enough for all of your tomorrows? Now, before we get started, I want to show you a brief video about a father showing his son about saving for his tomorrows. Do I really have to do this, Dad? Stand now more than ever. You need to understand the importance of saving money. But Grandma said I could use this money to buy whatever I want. Okay, next, please. Go on, Stanley. How can I help you, young man? I got a $100 check from my grandma, and my dad said I need to put it in the bank so it can grow over the years. Well, that's fantastic. A really smart decision, young man. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund. Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest, and it's gone. Uh, what? It's gone. It's all gone. What's all gone? The money in your account. It didn't do too well. It's gone. What do you mean? I, I have a hundred dollars. Not anymore, you don't. Poof. Well, well, what can I do to get back I'm my... I'm sorry, sir, but this line is for bank members only. I just opened an account. Do you have any money invested with this bank? No, you just lost it all. Then please stand aside for people who actually have money with us. Next, please. Hey! Hello, Mrs. Farnickel. How are you today? Making a deposit, are we? Great. We can just put that into your retirement account and make it go to work for you. And it's gone. What? Sorry, yeah, that's gone. Please step aside for people who actually have money with the bank. Next, please. Dad! Hey, I'm trying to teach my son the importance of savings. You already lost his money? Oh, Mr. Marsh, don't worry. We can just transfer money from your account into a portfolio with your son, and it's gone! This line's for people who have money with the bank only. Please step aside. Now, funny video, but it's really not that funny when it happens to us or the ones that we love. And it's time for a reality check. And that is, more than 50% of working adults over 50 believe they may have to delay their retirement. Now, 16% say they never expect to stop working. We have a colleague in our office whose close family friend retired about 28 years ago. He had $300,000 in the bank. His debts were paid off. His house was paid off. And his kids were grown. And he was bragging at his retirement party that he was set for life. We well, fast forward to today, 28 years later. He's 88 years old. He started to run out of money. And now he's back at work part time. Now we have programs in place that can prevent that from happening to you. Now let's take a look at some factors that are gonna impact our lifestyle in retirement. You have market risk, rising taxes, health issues, and most importantly, our CalSTRS and CalPERS pension. Now for the sake of time, we're just gonna go into CalSTRS. We can take a look at your CalPERS when we meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. Now, how do we determine our CalSTRS pension? You're gonna take your age and years of service under CalSTRS, your age factor from the CalSTRS table, and your final average compensation. So what does that look like? Let's say we have Jane. She's 31 years old, she wants to retire at age 60. That's going to give her 29 years of service. Now her age factor from the counselor's table at age 60 is 2%. So we take 29 times two, that gives us a payout factor of 58%. So let's say that Jane's highest one year salary was $60,000. 60,000 times 58%, is going to be 34,800. Divide that by 12, you're gonna come out with a monthly benefit from her CalSTRS pension of right around $2,900. Now I ask you, is that adequate to retire on today? Probably not, but there is one big thing that we didn't account for, and that is taxes. Now I ask you, is $1,900 a month to retire on today? Probably not. What about 20 or 30 years from now when we need the money the most? Now, this is gonna leave us with a big income gap at retirement. Now how do we fill those income gaps? Now, in attempting to fill the income gap, do you take risks? And why do people take risks with their retirement accounts? Well, they're trying to take advantage of those potential higher returns. And traditionally, our parents and grandparents were taught different ways to save. Now, the first one is going to be our fixed products, where you have your bank accounts, your savings accounts, your CDs, your bonds, where you have very low rate of return. However, you have all the safety of your principal. But you'll be lucky today to keep up with inflation. Now, the other option is variable products, where you have all the upside potential of the market. However, you can risk losing 20, 30, 40% overnight. And we just don't have the time to make that money back up. Now, both of these options are gonna leave us with another big income gap when it comes to our retirement. Now, let's talk about everyone's favorite subject, taxes. By show of hands, who in here has a 403B or TSA? Great, we have some savers. 
Now, traditionally, there are two different ways to save with your 403B or TSA. You have tax deferred and tax free. So let's take a look at how those work. Tax deferred, you pay no taxes now, the money comes out of your paycheck, and it's gonna grow through your working years. When you get to retirement, it's gonna be 100% taxable at excess. Now tax free, where you pay your taxes now, let the money grow through your working years, and when you get to retirement, you get to enjoy all that money tax free. Now let's put this another way. Let's pretend that I'm a farmer and I have a little bucket of seed, I'm ready to go plant my bucket of seed, and who do I see coming down the driveway? There's the tax man, right? And what's he there for? He's there to tax me on my little bucket of seed. But I'm just getting started. I just bought tools. My family's growing. I really don't have much money. And he can see that. So he says, I'm going to cut you a break. I'm going to come back later, and we can settle up then. You think, great. What a nice guy, right? You go out, plant your bucket of seeds. Come harvest time, you have green as far as the eye can see, right? But who's coming back down the driveway in their big black truck? The tax man. And why is he grinning bigger than you are? Because now he's going to tax you on that entire harvest instead of that just little bucket of seed. Now, what I just described was your tax deferred 403B, tax deferred TSA, where the government says, don't worry about your taxes now. We'll come back when you need the money the most. And by the way, we don't know how much we're going to take. So I ask you the question, are taxes going to be lower or higher when we retire? Well, let's take a look at some history. Now, here is the top, the top tax brackets over the last 100 years taken from the IRS website. Now, as you can see, in the 20s, we were in the lowest tax bracket, 25%. But what happened in 1929? The stock market crashed. That resulted in 50 years of higher taxes. Now, right now, we're in the second worst financial crisis in history. We have trillions of dollars of debt. We have the baby boomers retiring. Social Security is falling apart. And taxes just went up. So if history is going to repeat itself, does it make sense to defer our taxes? Now, taxes are going to be the biggest income gap when it comes to our retirement. Now, let's take a look at health. Unexpected medical expenses cause 62% of all bankruptcies and 49% of all foreclosures. But the scary statistic here is that 75% of these people in these categories had their full coverage health insurance. But health insurance does not pay the bills. Now, research shows that at least 70% of people over 65 are going to need long-term care services at some point in their lifetime. Every minute, someone will die from a heart attack, and every 40 seconds, someone suffers a stroke. The average annual nursing home cost in California is $84,000 per year, and that's not even for a private room. Now, are you going to have enough in reserve to bridge this huge medical expense income gap? Now, in attempting to fill these income gaps, let's take a little bit of advice from this man here, Warren Buffett, arguably one of the richest men in the world, right? Now, he has two rules when it comes to investing for retirement. Rule number one is to never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one, right? Now, if we take some investment advice from Warren Buffett, he uses something called indexing. Now, it gives you the safety of your principal and all the upside potential of the market. Now, let's take a look at what some money invested in the market looks like. Let's say we had $100,000 and we invested it in the stock market in 1997 and let it grow for 15 years. Now you're gonna ride that fun roller coaster of the ups and downs, a lot of sleepless nights, right? You're gonna end up with about $50,000 in return on that money. Now, let me explain how indexing works. You're gonna perform with the market up to a cap, so you're gonna grow a little bit slower. However, when the market takes a downturn, your money's gonna freeze and you don't lose one thin dime of principal or interest up to that point. Now when the market starts to pick up again, you get to not have to dig yourself out of that hole that everyone else is going to have to dig themselves out of but you're gonna grow a little bit slower and it's just gonna continue like that. So what does that look like? That same $100,000 in the same time frame, in the same market is actually gonna produce $61,000 different in that account. Now, who could use an extra $61,000 in their account? Everyone, right? Now, what are your potential options? Well, we have the 403B index annuity where you can keep doing what you're doing now. Just make sure you protect your investment from any losses. On the other side, you have the Roth IRA and the Roth 403B index annuity, where you can put away the tax-free money and get the tax-free income. Now, both of these strategies can utilize a guaranteed stream of income for the rest of your life, utilizing the guaranteed lifetime income rider, which is like creating a second pension in addition to your STRS, money that you can never outlive. Now, a few years ago, Time Magazine also suggested a new option to supplement your retirement, and that is the life insurance pension plan. Now, why life insurance? Well, Life insurance offers one solution for multiple risks because one of these three things will happen to us in our lifetime. We're either going to die too soon, we're going to become ill, or we're going to live too long. 
Now, whoever thought living too long was going to be a problem, right? So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have a 35-year-old who makes about $50,000 a year and has about $500,000 in life insurance. Because rule of thumb is you should have about 10 times your annual salary. In the event that something happens to you, you can replace the income, pay for your children's future, and keep a roof over your family's head. Now, let's say that she ends up passing away too soon. Well, the death benefit protection is going to pay out that half a million dollars to her loved ones tax-free to keep the roof over their head. Now, let's say she doesn't die too soon, and she actually lives long enough to become ill. Well, the accelerated living benefits of the policy will pay out about $10,000 of tax-free income every month in the event that she needs to replace the loss of income and pay any medical bills. Now, let's say she doesn't die too soon. She doesn't become ill, but she actually ends up living too long. That's where the cash value accumulation comes in. That same policy is actually going to produce about $50,000 of tax-free income for the rest of her life when she retires. Now, what is this called? The index universal life, insurance you don't have to die to use. Now, what's the best strategy for you? We have the indexed annuities, the 403B and TSA, or we have the permanent life insurance with the living benefits and tax-free income for life. Every situation is different, maybe a little bit of both. Now, my colleagues are going to be passing around this questionnaire here. It's very important that you put your name, your room number, and the appointment date and time you would like to meet with us for about 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to be here today, tomorrow, and the next day. We can meet before school, during lunch, after school. It's completely up to you. But it's very important that you put down your room number and appointment date and time. Now, thank you for your time.